Hi everyone, welcome to Tech News Curator. This is Julian Ho. The global supply chain of the technology industry is becoming regionalized, with various players rising up to challenges not only in terms of technologies, but also of the industrial strategies of enterprises and governments. This week we see that China's self-developed chips seem to have made progress again, from the recent Huawei's return to the 5G cell phone chip to the memory factory Changxin Memory and the chipmaker Lungsun Technology to create a self-developed CPU. The G2 structure is now still in progress. India may become the world's third largest economy, and the industry has high anticipation about it. The EMS leader Foxconn recently announced that its Indian subsidiary will invest about 1.54 billion US dollars to build a factory in India. The market speculated that it may be for the production of iPhones and other Apple products in India. Low orbit satellites are under development. Recently, Taiwan's development of low orbit satellites has seen two major breakthroughs, and it is hoped that it will be able to keep up with the pace of traveling to outer space as soon as possible. Tech News Curator will highlight the key events of the week for you and organize the industry news that you can't afford to miss. First of all, the electronics industry chain is now continuing the trend of regionalization, and the reality of one world, several systems is happening. Following Huawei's launch of the Kirin 9000S 5G cell phone chip after years of challenges, which was OEM'd by China's local supply chain such as SMIC, it seems that China's self-sufficiency in semiconductor production is clearly advancing in the CPU and memory fields. Changxin Memory emphasizes on independent researches and development and production. It launched LPDDR5 specification DRAM, also claimed to be the first local Chinese brand of self-research LPDDR5 products, which is also Changxin Memory's first poppy stack packaging memory chip, targeting the middle and high-end smartphone applications. At present, China's local cell phone brands, including Xiaomi and Transion, have shown vigorous supports, and it is claimed that in this way, the technological gap between Changxin Memory Storage and Samsung can be expected to shorten to four years. But in terms of the memory market share, the proportion of Changxin memory is still very low, with Samsung, Micron and SK Hynix occupying more than 90% of the global market, and there is still a big road ahead for China's operators. China's intention to challenge the global IDM leader Intel is even stronger in CPU field. Lungsun Technology released the Lungsun 3A6000, claiming that it does not rely on foreign licensed technologies and is a highly self-developed general-purpose CPU, and it is mainly used in desktop computers and so on. In the release event, Hu Weiwu, chairman of Lungsun Technology, said that the fundamental way out for China's information industry lies in the construction of a third ecosystem that is independent of the ZT6 and ARM systems. As we can see, ZT6 has naturally been the ecosystem that Intel has dominated for many years, and in recent years, Apple, Qualcomm, and MediaTek have begun to compete in the ARM architecture PC chipset market. Lungsun 3A6000 processor uses Lungsun's own instruction system, Lung Arch. It is the first product of Lungsun's fourth generation microarchitecture and adopts a 12M process. According to the results of the comprehensive tests, the Lungsun 3A6000 processor, which is claimed to be comparable to Intel's 10th generation CPU that will be available in 2020. More striking is that the Lungsun self developed CPU surprisingly have Taiwan's PC brand maker Asus support, rather than Lenovo and other Chinese brands. Asus announced the launch of support for Lungsun processor consumer grade motherboards, Asus Computer Open Platform. China General Manager Yu Yuanlin also emphasized that the Lungsun products are indeed benchmarked against the Intel's data. Whether it is to catch up with Samsung or Intel, China's local self-developed chips are spreading from mature chips but also synchronized from memory and logic ICs. The main direction of domestic substitution seems to be very clear. India, like China in the past, has a very good chance to perform the epic play Rise of a Great Nation. As we can see, the Indian subsidiary of Foxconn, the main supplier of Apple, announced that it will invest about 1.54 billion US dollars to expand its investment in India in order to meet its operational needs. This move by Foxconn has received great attentions from the media. According to Bloomberg, Reuters, CNBC, etc., all paid close attention to it and speculated that Foxconn's expansion in India seems to be an intention to create a new town for iPhone production. Foxconn, of course, did not announce more details at the first time, but the new investment direction reflects the geopolitical tension between China and the United States, which have made companies of Apple's supply chain continue to move their production bases or business bases out of China in order to diversify the risk. However, Foxconn's production of Apple products in India, including the iPhone, has actually been in place for years, including the latest generation of iPhone 15 series. It is shown that Foxconn has set up nine manufacturing parks in India, more than 30 factories in total, employing tens of thousands of Indian employees, with an annual revenue of about 10 billion US dollars. Foxconn chairman Young Liu also said on public occasions, the Indian market has great potential for development and emphasized that billions of dollars of investment is just the beginning. According to foreign news reports, the Indian state of Karnataka, Karnataka government, said in August, Foxconn plans to invest 600 million US dollars in the state, the construction of two component factories, one of which will produce iPhone chassis, the other will be the joint production of semiconductor equipment with applied materials. However, this does not include the plant that Foxconn plans to build near Bengaluru airport, covering an area of 300 acres and costing about 700 million US dollars. 
It is understood that will be the iPhone OEM assembly plant. In addition, Foxconn also plans to invest 500 million US dollars in Telangana, Telangana to build factories. Digitimes' senior reporter analyzed that China and India's EMS industry is in fact facing a difficulty. Foxconn is the only one capable to meet customer demands and to expand production in India. In fact, from the previous announcements made by Foxconn, as well as a number of group member companies have been investing in India to set up factories in recent years, it is obvious that under the requirements of customers, Foxconn's production scale in India is taking shape one after another, and the following are three points of analysis. First, the biggest advantage of Foxconn is its years of experience in supply chain management and manufacturing. Customers are optimistic about the potential of the Indian market, and the country has adopted various policies in recent years, hoping to increase the proportion of brand name companies and their supply chains to invest and produce in the country. So it is expected that Foxconn, as an important supply chain for customers, will invest in India. Secondly, in terms of the overall industrial environment, the local Indian industry is still unable to independently undertake the relevant orders. Previously, customers have fostered the supply chain industry in China, but in recent years, it has become unlikely to set up factories overseas. Only Foxconn can help customers quickly set up the relevant supply chain in India, and this has become Foxconn's irreplaceable advantage while facing competitions. Thirdly, the Indian market has much potential for growth, so the industry believes that Foxconn's recent investment in the country, the goal should not only be a single product such as the iPhone. As the industrial competition continues in the geosphere, what is the technology industry like in outer space? We have seen two major breakthroughs in Taiwan's low-orbit satellites recently, and the outside world is looking forward to seeing what other low-orbit satellite companies will come to Taiwan to cooperate and provide communication services. First, Taiwan's recent progress in low-orbit satellites is the successful launch of two Pearl satellites jointly produced by Foxconn and National Central University. Secondly, OneWeb, which has recently been merged with Utelsat, announced that it will participate in Taiwan's Ministry of Digital Affairs' non-synchronous orbital satellite, Digital Firmware Proof of Concept POC program, and at the same time, it will cooperate with Chunghua Telecom to provide services on the ground in Taiwan. According to media reports, it was previously rumored that SpaceX, the leader in low-orbit satellites, was interested in coming to Taiwan to provide services, but there has not been much progress. But the outside world is still looking forward to more international low-orbit satellite companies to cooperate with Taiwan's supply chain. According to the news, the Ministry of Digital Affairs' non-synchronous orbital satellite POC program has already confirmed the participation of LEO satellite operators OneWeb and Luxembourg Medium Orbit Satellite SES, and there is still one LEO satellite operator that is in the process of negotiating with the government for cooperation, but the Ministry of Digital Affairs did not disclose which operator it is. However, it is speculated that based on the capabilities of global players participating in the program, the only possible players are SpaceX, Amazon's satellite service project Kuiper, and the Canadian satellite company Telesat. Taiwan, like Ukraine, is in the hot spot of the war, so it is natural for it to have high expectations for SpaceX. However, on the one hand, it is rumored that SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has close ties with China, which makes Taiwan worry about his participation in the digital firmware program. On the other hand, it is understood that Elon Musk was previously unable to accept the Telecommunications Regulation Act, which stipulates that the provision of communication services must be regulated as a telecommunications company and that foreign ownership must not exceed 50%. No new progress has been made since then. It has been revealed that compared with OneWeb's choice to cooperate with Chunghua Telecom to land in Taiwan, Musk is quite insistent on sole proprietorship and there is no intention to amend the law or make special exceptions. So the possibility of SpaceX coming to Taiwan is not high at present. It is understood that the cooperation of the international satellite industry will not be refused. In fact, this is really in line with the spirit of digital toughness, if at the same time there are a number of different operators across multiple orbital communication sources. In the event of an emergency, the need to use satellite communications, if faced with man-made obstacles, but also immediately there will be other operators to provide satellite communication services, can be switched. In other words, the most important issue for Taiwan in terms of digital resilience is whether it can establish cooperation and testing relationships with as many operators as possible, rather than who will be the next operator to cooperate with Taiwan. Thank you for watching this week's Tech News Curator. Tech News Curator will be aired exclusively on the Digitimes YouTube channel every Wednesday at 9.0 a.m. EST. So please like, subscribe, and turn on the little bell to be notified of our updates as soon as they happen. See you next week.